Hey, welcome back. I'm starting to make some progress on the wings, and I thought I'd take a moment and talk about this outer flap, because the process for making that is a little different than making other parts. So going back to the beginning of the series, we talked about having good resources. Um, if you can find original manuals, so this is a shop manual for 109, it shows the flap, some of its uh, internal parts, its shapes, structures. You can find engineering drawings. These will tell you about internal structures as well as hinges, that kind of stuff. And I have another drawing here that's useful. It has the aileron, the flap, and the leading edge slat. It gives us some details about uh, the degrees of travel, where the hinge line is, uh, and then overall shapes. Now I measured this angle here. This is the flap. Um, this is a 30 degree angle, so we're going to need that in a moment when we make our flap. But it's going to start off like our other objects start off. So I go to shrinks, and I'm just going to take you know, a little bit more of it than I need to, just to cover the flap area, duplicate that, separate it, and then move it to the scene collection. And we can close our shrinks. And we don't need any of these. We don't need for text groups. I do need our cut tools. If you've been following along, you know that I use planes to cut out pieces. So I have these planes here. I think line up. Not that one. That one. So those planes line up with the edges of my flap. Let's isolate that just so we can see things better. I'm just going to cut these out using these tools. And then I'm just going to take the bit that is the flap, control I, X, and just get rid of everything I don't need. All right, so we don't need our quick cut tools right now. But I do want to check to make sure that these edges make sense with the drawing. So I do want a bit of a gap on the top, but it should be an even gap. So I'm going to move that there. And this could come a little bit left. And certainly the back edge could come forward. All right, and let's take a look at the bottom just to make sure we're at least in the ballpark. So this is our bottom edge. That's that's too much of a gap. So I'm going to GG. And I'm going to move this forward. And you know I'm going to actually take these two pieces and just hide the, everything else. Just make it a little easier to see what I'm doing here. Because I want this. This is the bottom here. I want it to be parallel to this plate that's next to it, but I don't want it touching. Because right? it is a movable surface. It's not going to be as tight as a regular panel line would be. And I'm just going to do something similar here, just to. Make sure that's, and this edge isn't finished yet, so it's, you know, these two panels aren't finished yet. So there's a little bit of a bend there, but I'm not worried about that right now. All right, so at least at this point, it's reasonably close to the shape we need. And I'm going to add some more, I'm going to actually take these out. And I'm going to add the same number of edge loops top and bottom. So okay, we'll do five and five. All right, and I just evenly spaced out my edge loops. And now I want to take my shrink wrap modifier for the wing and stick that on there. You can see it just bends it out a little bit, and that's just going to help it conform to the shapes around it. So I'm just going to apply that, since we don't need that now. And I'm going to add another set of edges down here, because the trailing edge is quite sharp. And when we subdivide it, we're going to need that sharpness. All right, so let's talk about this part here, this curvy bit here on the top of the flap. Like I said, I know that's 30 degrees. It's a 30 degree arc. So if I put my cursor here on the bottom corner, and look at it from the side. And I'm going to add a circle. And I want to have a fair amount of definition because I'm only going to use a few of the vertices from the circle. Most of them are going to get deleted. So I'm going to scale it up and rotate it. I just try to line it up so that this point coincides with that point on the flap. And top view, I'm going to do it for now. I'm going to square all this just to make our lives a little easier. We can adjust it later if we need to. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to move the cursor to this side. And I'm going to create another circle with the same number of vertices. I'm just going to scale that down. I'm going to rotate it. So my points line up. Good enough. And from the top view, I'm just going to make sure this one lines up. There. All right. So now I want to join these verts there to make it center. Same thing here. Merge these. And then I don't need these anymore. I'm just going to take them out for a second. I'm going to take this guy here, and from the side view, I'm going to go E, Z. I'm going to go straight up. I'm going to put my cursor back here again. And I'm going to say R30, negative. And it's going to give me my 30 degree arc here. And I'm going to do the same thing here. E, Z. Put my cursor here. And then R30. All right, so we can see that we've created this kind of a plane here. It gives us that angle for the front of the flap here. And hopefully that'll line up pretty close to one of our points. It's not too bad. 
So I'm going to take this, I'm going to get GG, and just move it down there, and then on the other side, and do the same thing. This one's not as bad. All right. So now I don't need any of these, because I know they're outside of that arc. Go on, go on. And there's our arc. So now this tool is useless. We can, we're done with it. Get rid of it. And if I just loft this along, F, 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 it gives me the leading edge of that. And I'm just going to use the loop tools, um, space, space those out. Just give me a better, better space. Now also you notice on this, that this is a recessed edge. So I need to make that. So I'm going to take my faces. And I'm going to E, Z, just push it straight down. And I'm going to take these guys and get rid of them. We don't want those. All right, there is the start of it. It's now not a bad idea to periodically check to make sure that things still fit because we're still working kind of on big pieces here. Um, I'm going to say that maybe that gap is a little too big. Like I said, these other the adjacent panels here haven't been finished yet, um, so we'll make sure that the that edge is straight later. Let's take a look at the bottom. Let's turn on the drawing. That's okay as far as a gap. Yeah, that'll be all right. We can again we can adjust it later if we need to. All right, so we got our curvature on there, and I want to cut out there are pieces on here. There's a piano hinge along the bottom. I bet you can see it here. It's a piano hinge. You can see bits of it here, and then there's this cutout here for this control arm that's there. There's a bell crank that goes in there. So let's take these two things. I'll show you what I did. I created these cubes ahead of time, and I placed them where the cutouts are for the hinge and for the, the recesses for the bell crank. And I'm just going to use a boolean on this. So a boolean, I'm going to use this guy as a target. Now if I hide my piece, oh, it's because the pieces aren't quite lined up. So let me let me adjust where these guys are. Like they're a little far forward. You can see I've got this centering line on them, so I'm just going to move it forward until this line is kind of on the edge there. And that's going to guarantee they're all the same depth. So now if we take a look at our boolean, it's a little better, but we can clean that up. Not a big deal. All right, so let's apply our boolean, and I'm just going to clean up those bits that are conveniently highlighted for us, so get rid of them. All right, so next thing to do is to uh, clean up all these orphan uh, vertices that we have. All right, I think I've cleaned up all the orphaned vertices there. I'm just going to do one more check. Oh, there was one lurking in there somewhere. Okay, the uh, next thing to do is to give this some thickness. So we're going to add a solidify. And we want it to be small because it's thin. Probably work, two millimeters. I only need the rim. And before I do that, I just want to double check my normals. Because if you apply them backwards, it'll be inverted. So they're not, they're good. So let's do that and apply. And I just need to kind of clean up down here where there's some tightness. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of that edge that I put in there a little earlier, just because it knocked things up. In fact, I'm going to go back to before my shrink wrap and get rid of it. Because sometimes you have sometimes you have edges that are too close together. When you do a, um, a solidify, it tends to get kind of gummed up. So let's try that again. Do solidify to two millimeters, and we'll give that a shot. See how that's a lot cleaner there? So let's apply that. I'm trying to think. Do I really? Yeah, actually, I think I want it solid, because we're going to have to add some other pieces. Normally, I wouldn't do it solid, but uh, we need a recessed edge here. I think it might be easier if I have some internal stuff. So that's our piece so far. It doesn't look too bad. Let's take a look at the top. You see how sometimes when the solidify tends to mess up the edges of things. They tend to become non-planar. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back and bring back our cut tools. And I want the tools that I use for the sides, this one and this one, I think. Yeah. And we're going to take our flap. And now I'm going to use our shrink wraps to make sure that the outer edges are nice and square with what they're supposed to be. So I'm going to select these vertices here along this outer edge. All right, so that's the inboard edge of the flap, and I'm going to create a group, call it inboard, assign those, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side, call it outboard, and then we can create some shrink wraps, and we want these to project along the X, and I want it to be the, in this case, I want it to be the inboard, which is this guy, look at it from the rear so we can see what happens. So inboard, I'm going to choose my cutting tool here. 
You can see how that tightens everything up. Right? It makes it plainer again. If you look particularly here, see how nicely that works. And I'm going to duplicate this one. Oh, this one's going to be the outboard one, though. So I'm going to use the outboard group. And we're going to shrink against this piece here. I think this one was probably a little better. Oh, we can still see a little movement, so it does tighten it up. All right, that's a good thing. You know, I'm going to duplicate these and keep them because we may want to use them again. So apply that one, call it outboard, call it inboard, and we'll disable them for now, but we may end up using them again just to do some more cleanup work. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to create this recessed piece in there. And for that, I'm just going to take like, maybe this edge here, maybe this face, two faces. Now we'll just take this row of faces here. All the way up around there. I'm going to duplicate it and separate it. And we don't need our cut tools anymore. I get rid of those for the time being. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab this row here and duplicate it and separate it. I'm going to hide this for a moment. Just pick this guy. I'm just going to loft here my edges. And then I don't need this row of faces anymore. I'll get rid of that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. I take this guy, loft my edges and get rid of those faces. So now we bring back our flap. We have that internal brace. Now we could have tried to make it all as one piece, um, but that would have required a lot of edge loops and uh, it would have made life a little more difficult as far as keeping the topology clean. So the next thing to do is add our bevel modifier to this and then we can add our subsurface and we can see how things look. I am going to add another edge loop down here because I want to keep this tight at the tip and just hang on with me for a little bit and I'll add all my bevels and seams here. I just like select them first. All right, I think that's all the edges. I'm gonna mark the seams because we're gonna eventually cut these anyway. And I'm going to make the mean weight of one. And I'm gonna actually mark one more seam along here. I didn't want to bevel weight this bottom edge because I want it to be slightly rounded because it's a hinge line. So there shouldn't be a, a sharp edge there, but we will need a, a seam there for when we unwrap our UVs. So let us add our uh, bevel modifier. I'm gonna move this up to the top. One, two, and weight, because we only want it to affect the weighted areas. And then I want to add a subdivision. That there, probably one is fine. And if I smooth, see how that looks. See, there's some weirdness going on in here. So I'll probably have to add some additional edge loops to tighten this up, just because there's so much distance between these pieces that the um, subsurface is tending to pull stuff. Sometimes you have to play with it to figure out which one it is. All right, well, I had to add a bunch of edge loops. I wasn't really planning on doing that. Um, I'd hope to get away with fewer of them. Um, sometimes the bevel modifier does a good job of keeping things nice and tight. Other times the distances are just kind of too big and you need to add some extra extra geometry in there to help the subdivision uh, from stretching too much. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spread these out because I really don't want those there, although they do kind of correspond to where the underlying structure is. I think I'd rather have a spread out subsurface, so just bear with me for a bit. All right, so I've gone ahead and spaced all those out just to give the subdivision surface modifier a little bit broader areas to work on. If we're really worried about polygon count, we could, you know, we could of course merge these into each other, um, you know, once they got away from this edge. But I, I really wanted this this edge here to be reasonably well defined, uh, just because you know it's supposed to be kind of a sharp, sharp edge there. You know, it's like I was missing a bevel. You can see that wasn't tight. All right, all right. So let's take another look at how things are fitting. It's always kind of the moment of truth. You do all that work and you come back and you find out that stuff somehow got out of alignment or doesn't look good. So, all right, so looking at the shape from the top, looking good. From the bottom, it fits our profile. We can hide our booleans there. Right. We'll be able to see our little hinge line there. And our edges are okay. And you're not gonna see, you know, when the flap rolls and stuff, you're not gonna really see past here. So I'm not gonna add any great detail there. So let's take a look at it just in matte cap. Make sure we're happy with that. All right. Just looking at that gloss as it goes across there. It looks pretty shiny. Not seeing any any big dents or anything in there. All right. So I think that is it for this outer flap. Like I said, it's a little different than the panels, but uh, it kind of needs to be. All right. I will see you in the next lesson. It'll probably be something else to do with the wing. Maybe an aileron or a wingtip or something. We'll find out. All right. See you there. Bye.